by email or on Twitter or something. <laughs> no. So, uh, yeah, I work at Safety Nitro. Yeah, yeah, that was So, uh, also, an <laughs> ideal engineer. That's not, that's not the, I need to change that. Yeah. Yeah, I need to rebrand that. Um, uh, so, talk a little about what, what Grunt is. Is if, um, so Grunt is a, uh, it's a JavaScript uh, task runner. Uh, for the purpose of for the purpose of managing your project, uh, most notably, it's when it goes into the build process. It's for the tasks that you continuously have to do, um, and you don't really want to do them uh, manually. But it's it is actually uh, more than just a build tool. It basically allows you to automate everything uh, you want to do. So. How many people like writing build scripts? <laughs> you don't like doing it, right? Um, so my 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 build scripts used to actually just be a bunch of online tools. Really, I never really got into the idea of, of writing build scripts. I used to just use smush it to smush up images and things like that. And it was really a, a manual process, and it was always done right at the end. It was like the last thing we did on a on a, on a project, and then I kind of got into the process of using tiny little scripts uh, that I'd find online, uh, little bits of Python or Ruby that would do some of these things, but I wouldn't have to use, you know, like the browser, browsers to do them. Build systems aren't anything that's new, you know, task runners, things that we want to do that they aren't anything new. Um, there's all the aches at the top. There's a the, the, the couple of Apache ones. There's more than that, but um, these are generally the ones that you'll find for web applications. Um, Make pretty popular at the moment. Uh, Twitter use it for a lot of their things. The, the three that I actually like are Make, Cake, and Jake, just because I think they're easily digestible and and I just get used to using them. Where I work, Ant is the most popular one. <laughs> it is, it is, um, I, I kind of, it, it's popular everywhere as well. If you, if you look on GitHub and you just search for ant files, um, a lot of people are using it. I'm not too sure why. Um, I always thought it was just because it was the only one with a decent logo. And I still kind of think that. But uh, I also think it has stuff to do with like the HTML5 boilerplate. When that came out, it came with an ant build script. And so people sort of got exposed to this idea of, of having a way of running tasks like hint in and lint in your code um, and through, through users, something like that. I never really got on with that much. And mostly it's because um, this is how you write JS in, uh, in your own files. Um, and I kind of look at this and try and ignore the fact that I've got a text message. <laughs> um, yeah, this is, does anyone know what that is? That's XML. Who wants to write XML? No one wants to write XML. When, when I look at this, I just think this is what I want to do when I look at when I look at this file. Um, yeah, like I'm I'm a child of the jQuery generation, as I like to put it. Um, I know what XML is. I know that sometimes it's really useful, but yeah, I really don't want to write it. So when Grunt came along, I kind of felt like I'd seen the light. You know, it was everything that I wanted, that I'd heard that these magic automation tools would, could do for you, and uh, and I, I enjoyed using it. Um, this is how you do the same JS hint using Grunt. Now, I, I've cheated a little bit here because in the ant, in the ant example, there are actually four lines that exclude some files, but also here there's actually just some Grunt boilerplate code. Which is so that's how you do the JS hint. That's all you need to write for your basic JS hint in in Grum. And I think it's a lot more um, readable, digestible for for anyone who has experience in writing JavaScript. It's just JSON file. It's an object. Grunt's built on Node JS, and obviously with Node JS comes NPM. Has anyone not used? Node. So it's 
really simple to install and run Node, um, especially if you're using a Mac, even if you're using Windows computers. Um, there's like an executable file, there's a package file, um, and it comes, Node now comes pre-installed with NPM, so there's no real reason to not be installed on it. Who uses Grunt? At the moment, if you go through GitHub and you just search for a Grunt file, everyone's all over Grunt. jQuery have been using Grunt for a while now as their main build tool to build their library when they go from, uh, if you've ever looked at jQuery source before it's compiled that you download, it's all separate AMD type modules. Um, so they've been using it for a while. That's mostly because Ben Ullman, the creator of Grunt, works on jQuery project. HTML5 Boilerplate now has a Grunt script since like version 3. They've had a Grunt script. I'm not too sure if it's been updated to the latest version of Grunt, but they've been using it for a while. Uh, Twitter use it for TweetDeck. Uh, I couldn't find any actual proof of this, but it does say on the Grunt site that they use it for TweetDeck. Has anyone used Yeoman at all? So Yeoman's a really nice scaffolding tool. It's kind of like... Um, kind of brings in the idea of Rails that scaffolding applications through the command line and uh, they heavily rely on Grunt for both running tasks within Yeoman and for the end build product. And Adobe have also started using Grunt. They use it on their browser-based IDE called Brackets and they also use it for the CSS filters, filters lab. So you can see here it's, it's pretty popular. Those are quite big um, open, source, open source giants, you might put it. And because they're using it, Grunt actually progresses really, really fast. You know, bugs get filed, they also get fixed, features get added really quickly. So let's install and start using Grunt. This is, once you've got Node installed, this is how you normally install stuff. You'll get used to the idea of using NPM install. Um, this is installing what is now the Grunt CLI. Uh, which is the client line interface. It's not the actual task runner. Online, if you look for tutorials on Grunt, you'll find a lot of the installs being different than this. Um, just refer back to the gruntjs.com website because they're now out of date. And then we need two files. We need a Grunt file and our package.json. Again, if you start getting used to using some node tools, package.json is like our, our manifest file and the grunt file is where we de uh, like um, decide what we're going to do with our, with our grunt build. So this is our basic package.json. Um, like I said, it's, it's, a, it's a manifest file, uh, really basic JSON objects. We got a name, a version. That's kind of like the minimum that you need for a package.json. And we have a field there called dev dependencies. You don't have to have that there um, to actually have a valid um, package.json. And then within our project, we do npm install grunt, and we do this hyphen hyphen save dev. And what that does is that puts a local running version of grunt within our project and also writes to the package.json the version that we're using and the little tilde uh, just means that we're running anything from 0 0.4 upwards because they now know that the API for running run won't change from this point. So, <coughs> yep, that's saved. And the reason we're now installing a local version, this is the actual task runner. The reason we're doing that in, in previous versions, you installed Grunt globally and we, there was conflicts in Windows where you tried to run Grunt in Windows um, it wouldn't run, it always wanted to use a local version. So that's now fixed by installing it there. So for each task we want to do, we install a module. npm install grunt contrib js hint, that's just the name of the module. It's really hard, easy to find these plugins, they're all on the main website. Um, and then again, we save that as a dev dependency. And again, that gets written to our um, package.json. So now when we start passing around this file, all anyone has to do on the project when they're new to the project is run npm install. 
it will pull down the version of grunt we need to use and any other dependencies that we have. Is that assuming that the command line the grunt is there? Yeah, obviously they have to install node, um, npm comes with node, and they've installed um, the CLI of grunt. This is our kind of this is our boilerplate grunt file. Um, so what we have here is a common JS type module defined at the top. Um, and this is all we need to really get started. Adding our task in the init config objects. Um, that's the same as the JS hint as we saw earlier. You'll notice this pattern the star star slash star dot js is a common pattern, I'll get onto that in a second. And all that does is that looks for it in our assets folder and looks for any JavaScript file beyond that. Then we, uh, we have to load in our task at the bottom. Um, so each individual task is, is loaded in. And then we just, um, we actually register it to a task. So this is the default task, which is when you open up the command, you type in grunt, it looks something like this. And so just typing in grunt will run the default task in the grunt file of wherever you are. Um, and that's run JSLint. Uh, there wasn't much code in there, so that's why it's pretty quick. But it's not, it's not slow at all. So now we have this way of adding tasks, it just gets quicker and quicker to add it. Install Uglify, um, again that writes it to our MP, uh, package file, and then all we do is we add in the parameters for the Uglify, uh, register, um, load in the task at the bottom, and then add it to the default task, Uglify. Then again, when you're on grunt, you'll do the JS lint, and then it'll uglify with files with the configuration that you put in. So, so far we've added all our tasks to the default task, and you don't always want to do that. Um, sometimes you have heavy tasks, such as minifying images. Um, you don't want to do that all the time. You only have to do it once, really, or any time you add a new image. So we load in the image min, and then we just register it to a new task. And that just uh, runs it like that. It's more than just configurations. <coughs> So let's go back to our um, package file for a second. Um, so the, the package JSON that we had before, we can actually pass that into Grunt and start using the nodes that are in that within our build script. Um, it's really cool if you just want to update once version control. So if you want to do some dirty cache busting and you want to add a version number to the end of um, to the end of your minified JS, um, you can actually just use the, the package. You, all you do is you change it in the one package.json, and then when you run your build again, the version number will change, and you kind of got some, some cache busting going on there. So the version is something that's in Are you writing the version number in there? Is it bringing through? So you know in the, in the package.json, in the package JSON? Um, version, you can add whatever you want in there as long as it's valid and version is one thing that you can have in there. Cool. <coughs> you can also just use the package name as well. Um, it's quite a common pattern that you'll see in a lot of Grunt files to use the name. Um, that allows you to change it really quick. If you're you know, doing some open source projects or you're doing something where you need to put the comment <coughs> field at the top, especially if you're squishing a lot of files together and you want the separate ones. Um, a lot of minifying plugins, things like that, allow you to pass in this banner option. And then that way you can pass in whatever you want. You can also, Grunt has a lot of templating built in. And one of the things is the date. 
and so you can just template in the date when that gets built. So you can always refer to comment in a minified file to make sure that the right minified file is being used. <coughs> Anyone ever accidentally left console.logs or alerts in production quality code? Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so there's one little plugin that's become part of like my boilerplate grunt file is just um, go through the JavaScript, remove all the login, and just save back over the same JavaScript. Um, it's useful when you accidentally do things like that. Um, baking is, is pretty cool. Um, it basically allows you to do HTML includes um, and then run your run grunt and it will build all those together in one uh, file, kind of like PHP includes, but now you don't have to run a PHP server. Anyone like SAS? Yeah, SAS is it's pretty cool. I used to use a lot of uh, GUI um, tools like CodeKit or Live Reload to compile SAS, and now um, that I find a lot easier to run. The config it's pointing to is a Ruby file. I like to keep the config separate in the language that SAS is made for, which is Ruby, and it also makes sure that no one can really overwrite it um, within the JavaScript. You can do it in the grunt file, but I don't like to do it that way. Who likes testing? <laughs> yeah. So uh, you, can, you can run QUnit through Phantom.js. Uh, Phantom.js is a headless web browser. Um, you can either point it to actual URLs if you're running a server, or uh, you can actually use the pattern match, which is the point to your test file and then point to all HTML. Phantom will go through one by one, run each of those, run each of the tests in that, and report back to you in the command line. So that, uh, with that, when it runs that, load all the stuff from the file system as well. So Phantom has access to the file system. Yeah. You need a server yeah. Okay. yeah. So you just point to the, the one at the bottom, you just point to tests and each of the tests, and it just goes through each of the test files, runs each of them separately. Does it have a, are you going to talk about watch later on? Uh, it'll be coming up, yeah. Okay. So, so uh, you can also, if you don't like QUnit, you can use Jasmine, uh, Mocha, or even NodeUnit um, if you're writing any node modules or anything. It's a really great plugin ecosystem. It's one of the big things about Grunt that I really love is that there are currently about 400 or more plugins that aren't the main ones that come with Grunt. So the Grunt team actually work on these Grunt plugins called Contrib, which are part of the Grunt team writing these plugins. But people have written all these other plugins for so many other things. Things like um, FTP and um, pushing files up to AWS or compiling with different things like Clojure, or even running git commits after your build. And yeah, it's one of the biggest things about Grunt that I think is a <coughs> big win. Grunt init is a scaffolder. Um, so it's a bit like Yeoman. It does uh, very particular things. And um, it's a separate install from Grunt. So you don't get it when you install Grunt. You run this command, so git clone from github. Um, all I'm um, cloning is a template uh, ready to build jQuery plugins and just saving it to uh, the grunt init file uh, folder under the file name jQuery. And then I just have to run grunt init jQuery and I'll quickly Can everyone see this? Or this um, so if I'm writing a uh, plugin, a jQuery plugin, uh, there's a lot of like boilerplate code that you need. So I'm just going to make a directory for my plugin. Go into that, and then I'm just going to run grunt init jQuery. It's going to ask me a bunch of questions. Um, plugin name. Uh, you can, I'll, I'll just go through this quickly. Title, description, 
version number, uh, the Git repository. You can you can change all these options right here in the command line. The home page, the issue tracker, any licenses, author name, email. Uh, do I need to change it? No. So now what that's actually done is it's actually structured out everything for me. Um, all of this was just generated by Grunt. Uh, gives me a JS hint, git ignore, actually writes me out a Grunt file ready for me to use straight away. I get the, the package JSON I can use for development. Um, I get the jQuery standard plugin for when you're submitting to the uh, plugin site. I get all my tests um, that are already running, that already include all my modules that I need to include. I get boilerplate plugin code. And this is just, it basically gets you up and running um, really quickly with something like uh, jQuery plugins. I'll also give you another example. Um, so maybe you don't want to go through the, all the hassle of writing your actual grunt file. Um, so you, there's actually a template for that. The grunt file. Oh, okay. Cheers. See that? Yeah. Okay. So, is the DOM involved anyway? Yes. Concatenated, minified. Will I have a package.json? Yes. Do I need to change anything? No. What that's done. It's actually produced me a really basic grunt file already for me. So you can do that in all your apps. You don't have to write anything. Um, yeah, and you've got a bunch of tasks all ready to go. Sort of get you started really quickly with grunt. Uh, you'll notice here the, uh, the watch. We haven't kind of gone over that, and Tom wanted to go over that, so I'll go over that next. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> so watch is um, it's basically a way of it's a it's a long running grunt task. So grunt will run your task and then stop. Uh, watch will actually continuously run. Um, and what it does is you just tell it, watch all these files, and when anything changes in this directory or any of these files change, I want you to run a task. So it's cool if you want to lint while you're, while you're saving and things like that. And some people do it in their um, editor. Some people get really annoyed when they're doing it in their editor. So. so you can also watch for, it's really handy for SAS and it's what I mostly use for it. So I'm just saying watch all the SAS files and when anything um, has changed, I just want you to run the compass command. That way you compile all my SAS and I'm looking at things. So, why would we use Grunt? Let's turn mirror and off then. Grunt file really is just a big configuration file. I think that's, that's fairly obvious. Um, some people like that. I like that. Some people don't. The good thing is, is that because it's just JavaScript, it's also just a scripting file. You can just register your own tasks and run something if you are if you want to. There's good consistency in Grunt. Um, all of the plugins follow a consistent style. You never have to really think, once you get started using it, you never really have to think about how you would write um, the task for something because they all follow a consistency in it, and that's a good thing. Community, um, it's at 0 0.4 at the moment, and like I said, there are like over 400 plugins. So people are consistently developing uh, newer plugins to do tasks, even if they're just little things. It's it's growing and it's growing fast. 
because it uses Node, Node is really powerful. Um, it's easy to write for because we already write JavaScript. And uh, it, it makes it easy to do things like access the file system. Grunt supplies a bunch of APIs that make it even easier than just using Node um, to access the file system. If you need to run a task and then you need to copy a load of files over to another directory, Grunt already supplies that, those tasks, uh, the, the API to do that, um, just for free. So what should you do now? You should go away, um, you should install Node, and then you should install Grunt. You should use it on your current project if you can, or try and use it on a current project if you can. If not, try and use it on your next project. Learn to love automation. Learn to making your workflow uh, a nicer and easier environment to, to work in. I really don't want to be running a bunch of scripts and different tasks to do a lot of things. I want, if I know I need to push a bunch of images up to S3 eventually, I'll just go ahead and write that into my grunt file now and it's there ready. Have a look at some of the grunt files on GitHub, um, some of those big projects that use them. Have a look at them, see what they do. jQuery, um, like I said, jQuery used Grunt already. So it's actually um, really good if you want to. Does everyone know you can now build your own version of jQuery? Um, and you can just use it, do it using Grunt. And I'll, if you want, I can show you. So I'll move this one up to the top for time. So all I've done is I've made a copy of um, jQuery on my local machine. Um, it's the latest version from the master branch on GitHub. And rather than try and have to remember. So from there, I can run this Grunt custom. And what I'm doing is I'm removing the Ajax modules. Um, I'm removing the CSS. Uh, modules, so like the way to add a class and things like that. Maybe I don't want them. I'm also removing sizzle because I'll just, what that does is that now falls back to query selector rule in jQuery. So I'll run that and that'll go through the build and then that's given me my version of jQuery that, that I want. So now I'm not using anything extra that I don't need to use. Um, so minified it's like 42 it's 42 kilobytes, um, and then once you gzip it, it's smaller than if you just use the whole library. Contribute. One of the biggest things that you can do. Um, if you start using Grunt, and you like using Grunt, then you probably can help file bugs. Like it's the easiest thing to do is if you find something wrong with Grunt, go on GitHub. Um, it's easier than using Bugzilla and things like that. If you need to file a bug, just say this doesn't work. You might someone will help you with it. Um, if you're using a plugin again, and it, something's wrong. Last week I was using the Bake plugin, and there was an issue with special characters being passed through the template and uh, filed a bug and within 12 hours it was fixed and pushed up and you know, it was very given back. Um, and also write plugins. Um, part of that grunt init template is that it gives you a grunt plugin boilerplate so you can actually write the task that you might want to do if you find something that isn't already being done. Um, it's one of the things you can do. That. Thanks. Any questions? Uh, watch. Yeah. So I think it's worth discussing watch a little more. Yeah. Because uh, one of the issues I've run into with running Grunt is most people don't understand how powerful it is. So like you can change your markup, you can live change things. Yeah. Or recompile, but how does that operate? Does it listen just for specific file changes? Or so you can point it, you can do a couple of things. You can point it at a directory and say anything within that directory if it changes. Um, I find that can be problematic if you have a lot of files. 
that um, it starts getting uh, slower. Also, things like you don't want to point at an image thing because you don't want it to be running tasks on images all the time. So, um, yeah, just you declare like an array of files, whether you want it all CSS, whether you want it all JS, and um, it watches all those. Be careful what you're actually going to do it for. Do you like you don't need it to minify the JS every time unless you're sort of like doing some uh, testing on performance. So really, you want to do really small tasks on the watch. Um, watch doesn't start up a server, so you need to be running a local server. There is there are plugins um, to run small servers from your grunt file, so. Uh, it just basically starts up a basic HTTP server within that file, within that folder. Um, if you think that's something that should be added to the presentation, I might add that. I felt that I didn't want to give too many examples because 400 plugins are hard to choose from. Um, but that's something that I do regularly, is that just use Grunt to run a server. If you check out Yeoman um, and the way that that runs a server, it runs a server and it also runs a thing called Live Reload. So when anything changes, it will automatically refresh the browser for you. So it takes out that one step that you never have to do is that change your file, look at the browser, it will be reloaded. And then it's just changing the files that are specific to, it's only detecting, so it detects, no, sorry, I'm trying to phrase the question correctly. Is it listening for specific file changes? Yes. So it knows to trick off the whole thing, or is it listening for large-scale change, like is it watching? No, it's listening for watch? specific file changes, so okay. you can specifically say I want you to watch main.css and only main.css, Yeah. and then what it will do is it, it only reloads the CSS layer, Okay. Uh, it doesn't go and recompile everything, so it just it reloads that one layer. Specific tasks are on Yeah, that. You, can, you can do things like if you want to run CSS bless on your CSS files while you're writing them, um, yeah there's loads that you might want to do. If you want to go through and put all the prefixes in, then if you're using Compass, um, you only have to write your prefix. You only have to write border radius, and it'll go through when you save it and write all your mods, border radius, and things like that. How much time did you save? Save from what? <laughs> using Grunt instead of manually building and uploading to I was on this. I was on this project once where we had to do a lot of manual build steps. Um, which included squishing HTML into a JSON string and then uploading that to a Amazon server, um, and uh, it saved it saved a lot of time. Uh, doing just really small things, you know, uh, splitting out a file to make it more modular using AMD or um, running tests using Phantom. So. One of the things that I want to try and do is do CSS regression testing using Phantom and use it within Grunt, which I know will save a lot of time. Um, when you first run a build, you said that it was quite quick because... There wasn't much in the thing. Yeah, how long? It's not slower than Ant. Um, it depends what you want to do. Uh, you saw it do the jQuery thing, and that both went through, did the JS hint, and it did uglifying. And it was quick. And jQuery is quite big JavaScript. Um, it really does depend on what you're doing. Uh, the squishing of images, depending on the optimization level that you use, that's the thing that's longest that, and it's seconds, if that. So. I think it would be worth doing a comparison between Ant and Grunt, uh, because there's going to be a lot of people who know Ant. You did? Uh, yeah, you missed that part. Did I miss it? Yeah. If you want to see the thing. Uh, the other thing is Windows. I mean, that's one of the big issues with Sapient is how do we how do we as an organization uh, support Windows? Because I know that if we do a grunt task over here, and we need, it'd be worth actually talking a little bit more to that, um, just simply because I know that if, we, if you were to give this presentation to the Indians, they'd be like freaking out because it only if it, they need assurance that it works on their Windows machines. Yeah, Grunt. And I mean, large, a large uh, organization, so that's going to be a big issue when selling it in. Yeah, I've tested on tested on Windows, uh, Windows Seven, yeah. using um, uh, Sigwin, yeah. which is like the, the, the 
terminal for Windows, uh, it works fine. There used to be a problem with 0 0.3, the version before the yeah. recent release, where because the grunt file was actually called grunt.js, and when you run the grunt command, it looks at that file and goes, eh, I don't know what I'm doing. Grunt file name is now changed to grunt file, yeah. and so when you run grunt, it looks for the grunt file, no problem, I've run Windows, I've run things on Windows, and it works fine, and that's what's really great is that once you have Node installed, and Node is really easy to install on Windows now because yeah. there's an executable, um, yeah, you can do Windows uh, compilation. It's, it's pretty easy. I mean, when you get to stuff like SAS, that's a little bit more difficult. I had a few problems where you had to just move some of the SAS files, uh, some of the Ruby files around, but that's not down to Grunt. That's down to the way Ruby's run on Windows. Um, but it's, it's quite easy to get around. Uh, is there a, another version of SAS? There is, but I wouldn't use it. Like, uh, I did state that I prefer to use the configuration in Ruby because SAS is written in Ruby. That way I know that it's always up to date um, and it's written in the language it's supposed to be. So yeah, this was the com comparison to AMP. So that's JS hint in AMP. And that's how I feel when I try to have to write XML. Um, and that's JS hint in Grunt. Yeah. So, well, well, so all you've done is say everything from assets, all the directories that may be a JS. So why could you not use similar pattern like that to include a flag in there? You cheat. Well, I mean, it's... <laughs> it, <laughs> so the AMP file has... All right, so hold on. So the, the include here? Source directory, include all the direct... Okay, all the JS files. And then there's the exit. not that. So whereas... Because you have a, a JS hint, was it JS hint, hint uh, config file? How would that? How much of that could you bring into the current file? So you can bring everything in, like you can pass no, JSON fair. straight in. Because I don't think that's a fair comparison. Because actually, all of your configuration for JS hint is in the AMP file, whereas the so the reason for using a separate file and the reason I use a separate file is that I like to keep it within my directory. Because I have, I actually use JS hint within Sublime Text. Uh, that plugin can actually read that JS hint RC, and also everyone now knows what I'm looking for in my JS hint. So everyone gets that one file. Most IDEs can use that and read that to run live hint in, and if not, it's just passed into the to, into the Grunt file. Save me a lot of time. Yeah, I mean, I recommend looking at the like the um, the JS hint RC files and the edit config RC files because when when you're on a big team, which you Marks and Spencer's guys would probably know, having something already preset up for everyone else the minute someone walks on board to do npm install, grunt, and, and then run npm install inside that, and they get everything that they need to build. Because it's it's useless having one person on the team who only knows how to run the build script. So <laughs> is, there, is, there a, is there an app script? <coughs> is there an app script that could install? Uh, yeah. <laughs> there is actually there is actually if you if you like using AMP for some weird fucking reason, um, <laughs> you can actually do there is actually a, a plugin that you can run Grunt to run your AMP file instead. Use Grunt to run something in Ant. Maybe there's something that Ant does that Grunt doesn't do. My my Ant file at the moment runs the Python thing that Curly wrote. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, there's there is loads of plugins. There's ones to run shell commands and to do all sorts of things. Sure. Grunt. Well,